Hi everyone, uh, I'm Christian Veer. Um, I'm part of Cisco DevNet. I'm technical lead at Cisco and I'm a developer advocate at uh, Cisco DevNet. I focus on Cisco security technologies and I'm really excited to spend next 30 minutes with you guys. Um, this is awesome that you are here, first of all, because you took up this challenge to participate in uh, uh, Smart India Hackathon. And it's a great platform, uh, Smart India Hackathon, which actually is encouraging you to solve real world problem. As a student, that's pretty awesome. Um, and so I'm, I'm trying, I'm gonna try my best that next uh, 30 minutes are enjoyable and you probably uh, will uh, learn something and will have some pointers to, to solve the problem statement which we have put under security track. And so uh, the session which you have joined with me, um, it, its topic is network security. Uh, so I will be focusing mostly on, on security aspects and, and especially drilling down on NGFW because that component is what you will be using uh, to, to deliver your solution. And it will be very helpful if you understand some concept around it. And, and there will be some demos as well. So let's look at the problem statement. In my opinion, um, computing devices, whether it is a computer or a smartphone or a tablet has become integral part of a classroom. Sometimes schools provide these devices and they can control them really, really well, what, what can be accessed through them. But most of the time, schools don't have enough funds and probably ask students to bring their own devices. Uh, these devices are very integral part of the curriculum. Uh, the teachers run a lot of rich curriculum on these devices, which is available on web. And sometimes they even conduct exam on these devices. So at that time, I think when the devices have been used in the, in the school or in the college, teachers want some control. They want to make sure that the, the productivity of the class is high. They are not getting distracted by other content, social media content or any other uh, type of content, but other than learning. And hence, they would like to get some control that when the class is going on on their devices, if they are using the wireless service from the school, they should be able to control the content which is being accessed through these um, or the URLs or the websites or domains being accessed through these devices. So it's very simple use case. Um, it's very, very um, important use case because um, these devices are extremely important and very integral part of the learning. And, and this increases the productivity of the class. This increases the, the, the learning of the class as well. So that's our statement. And, and I think uh, uh, that we can achieve this using network entities like um, access points and some security entities like uh, next generation firewalls. Uh, those technology um, components can be used and simple web development like developing a portal for, for teacher to go block uh, certain URLs. Uh, so these are the concepts you will read uh, to to do to create some uh, really nice um, uh, um, application to help productivity of teacher. So so let me put some uh, context uh, behind uh, this problem statement. And this is true for school. This is true for organizations. If you have a company, it's true for the company as well. Um, everyone is embrace, embracing um, digital transformation. It's an awesome time to live on earth. Um, everything is online. Uh, devices are extremely cheap. Everyone can afford these devices and they are actually making us extremely productive. We can actually go from interacting with our social network to an awesome course on MIT and learn about artificial intelligence. So, so this, this, this is changing our lives, uh, both at work, at school, at, uh, at our home, and, and it has changed our lives significantly. But it has come with a price. So all good things, uh, like economists generally say, there are no free lunches. So what it has done, this, this move towards um, digitization has done, has, has make us vulnerable towards attack as well. So I will present a little bit of stats, um, uh, like 90% of organizations are not fully aware which of the devices accessing their network. It's kind of like a sad statistics, 
um, which I mean adversaries will take totally advantage of. By 2020, uh, two third of the traffic will be all IP based. Um, 21 billion IoT devices are expected to join internet and 80% of the traffic will be encrypted. That means there will be even less visibility on what is happening on your uh, network. Threats are constantly evolving and getting smarter. This is another uh, uh, twist uh, on, on the pain points is that it's constant evolution is going on. The adversaries are very highly motivated, both uh, financially and sometimes they are even supported by um, uh, government organizations. So, and they can target, they can create targeted attacks so they can customize a, a attack towards a particular organization. Um, the attack is becoming more and more sophisticated as well. And from if you look from adversary's perspective, they are doing an investment, right? So if they are investing, they don't want to be uh, detected without uh, a payoff. So they they have they are building more sophistication in hiding themselves as we are creating more tools to expose them. There are some threats which are from inside. These threats doesn't necessarily need to be malicious. These can be simple errors created by users. Um, and these errors can be like, um, somebody wants to be very productive and wants to share a certain document with their colleagues or coworkers or their customers and they put that document into the cloud and without unknowingly exposing IP or exposing information which can be vulnerable at any given time uh, sitting in that cloud. So there are that type of um, uh, threats which are out there as well. So if you look at the average time, it takes around 191 days on average to detect these threats and it takes around 66 days to contain them. So if you look from the adversary's perspective, from their angle, uh, they would like to increase this time of detection. And if you look from uh, a defense point of view, you would like to reduce this uh, time of detection and containment. So if you look from the se effective security posture point of view, uh, you have this timeline and you are fighting against um, time. Basically time is very precious in this. And so you, you, have, you have to identify threat and, and respond to them extremely fast. So if you can collapse this time and make it really, really short time of detection and response, then your security posture is very effective. And everyone in the organizations, uh, especially the, the security teams in organizations are focused to achieve this. So how do you, how do you go about doing uh, effective security? So the first part is you gotta understand your network, right? What is on your network? You have access points, you have firewalls, you have switches, those are your network components. Then you have users who are the users of your network. You have servers, you have server apps, you have clients, you have operating systems. It may be Mac, it may be Windows, it may be smartphones, um, iOS or Android. Um, then you have files, like what files have been used mostly by your users, whether PDF, JPEGs. Uh, or what type of applications most of your users are using. So understanding and building that, uh, that, that knowledge about your network is extremely important and it's the first step. The second step would be is to, um, to do kind of like a vulnerability assessment. What are the weaknesses? Where are we exposed? Um, and figuring that out is extremely important. Um, both on the client side, on the users, whether they have the strong passwords, what applications they are using mostly, what vulnerabilities are in those applications. If our most of the used operating system is Mac, what vulnerabilities exist on Mac, and how do we um, uh, how do we keep a, a track of it, right? And and what files are, are mostly used, what vulnerabilities exist on those. So figuring that out is the second step, figuring out your weaknesses. The last step to it is that you already know what you have on your network. You already figured out um, uh, using penetration testing or whatever techniques you use, you figured out all the vulnerabilities of your network and all the assets in your network. The next step is to secure it. 
based on those vulnerabilities, uh, you figure out uh, what entities you will add to secure it, what tools you will add to secure it, right? So, um, and, and then what uh, what you get is is intelligence from like policy violations, intrusion events, gives you some intelligence, what malware is, 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 is flowing through the network, whether it is endpoint security components like AMP, uh, can give you those information. Or, and then you have this threat intelligence which is coming from outside organizations, uh, such as our Cisco Telus, um, which has awesome uh, uh, threat intelligence. So, so, so you collect that, you build a team, and it's a constant cycle. You go through this cycle over and over again to protect. Right? So one of the important component in this whole thing is, is, is firewalls. So the, the question to be asked is what do you expect from the firewalls? So there's an evolution which is going on on firewalls and we have now next generation firewalls. The expectation is that uh, the breaches which are happening um, should be automatically detected um, so that there is a continuity of business. Uh, there is also a huge strife that we should have a lot of visibility in security and, and network and can we detect and stop threats quicker. And third, and which is very important part, is can we automate most of the operation to save time, to reduce complexity, as the APIs are available on them or not? Can we create smart workflows um, using uh, the next generation firewall? So, so these are kind of like a, a, a new demands which is out there. So, Cisco Firepower NGFW is, is our next generation firewall, which um, is fully integrated threat platform. The integration extends beyond uh, simple security services and includes uh, integration across networks and endpoints. Um, and, uh, and with other Cisco security platform, like for example, you see here ICE, um, which is identity-based uh, policy control. Um, our threat focus capabilities are um, industry leading, uh, both for known and unknown threats uh, using NGIPS and M functions. So one of the reasons why um, our NGIPS solution is, is very good or industry leading is because it is backed by, by TELUS intelligence. And uh, with Cisco Firewall, um, I think most of our customers know that they are protected automatically. And one of the big reasons is Talos. Um, it's, it's, it's a team of 250 plus uh, threat researchers um, and analysts. They work with massive data sets, create protections in the form of security intelligence feeds and um, snort rules for non-threats. Uh, and unknown threats, emerging threats, and zero-day attacks. And then these feeds are pushed to Cisco and JFW automatically to keep the customer safe. Um, so one of the requirements for the new generation as we discussed earlier is can you automatically prevent the breaches? And, and this is why um, I, I think we differentiate ourselves from the competition is the intelligence which is coming from Talos. Uh, so this is something which you, you, you get along with uh, Cisco uh, firewalls. So there are many ways you can deploy um, the NGFW. Um, I have to simplify for you if you plan to use for your um, uh, challenge uh, in the hackathon Cisco NGFW, I think your best bet would be go in line and, and, and route it. Uh, because most likely you will be downloading um, uh, uh, a virtual image which you will be running in VMware infrastructure. And I'll show you where to go and download uh, the image with the 90 day evaluation license. Uh, so, so these are the, there are multiple modes available. Some of these modes are available with conjunction of running uh, Cisco FMC along with your F, uh, NGFW, which is a man, one of the managers. And I will cover a little bit about that, but here, just to make the life simple, if you if you decided that you will use Cisco and GFW as one of the firewalls in your solution, 
then you can go download it for a 90 day evaluation license and use uh, the, the local manager on it which is which is fire uh, firepower device manager and i'll cover that a little bit uh, towards the uh, end of this presentation and the the method the way which you will um, deploy it is uh, the mode you will do it is in line and route it this is one of the functionality uh, which um, we provide um, to uh, along with the ngfw uh, basically um, ngfw um, can do deep packet inspection and and filter traffic based on the url categories and these categories can uh, are provided by talus for example there is this gambling category we saw in the example social network porn website websites or porn sites or um, you can even create your own custom um, uh, categories or you can uh, create custom urls and you can block them and that is the functionality uh, you will land up uh, uh, using in your um, uh, hackathon challenge um, so um, I will show you guys a little bit like how uh, uh, it looks like on um, the NGFW and, and that will give you a good idea about this picture. So moving forward, uh, let's look at the management options. So there are multiple management options to manage these boxes. So for example, if you have a single box and most likely in your solution to show your solution, you will have a single box. Um, or two boxes or three boxes, then Firepower uh, Device Manager is the way to go. It's very easy. It's almost like using, if you have configured a Linksys router or your home router, any home router, it's it made simple like that. It has API, a full-blown API on it, which you will leverage to, to communicate from your web portal, which you will create for your solution. Um, and so this is the way to go. Um, if you generally, if you have more than ten or plus boxes, um, or if you're a large enterprise, you have deployed multiple boxes, uh, maybe hundreds of them, then uh, you go more towards the centralized management, which is Firefarm Management Center. And there is a cloud-based solution now uh, available, uh, which we call Cisco Defense Orchestrator. For for this solution, for this hackathon, I think most of you will probably focus on OnBox uh, uh, Device Manager, which is FDM. So let, let's go uh, look a little bit deeper into this device manager. As I said, uh, the three things which, um, which you can actually um, totally be sure of, it's very easy to set up. Uh, you can control access and you can set policies. You can do full configuration, uh, either using UI or using APIs. Um, it, 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 it has role-based access control. It's um, high availability. It has uh, VPN support. Um, you can do the URL filtering, which, which will be required for this uh, um, a challenge and I will show you guys a little bit in the demo as well. So this is a quick introduction. Um, so FDM has a full blown REST API exposed um, on the device. Uh, you can do OAuth based authentication to get access. Um, it has a web based a built in API explorer because the API is built using open API spec. Uh, so you have uh, browsable documentation right on the box um, and which helps significantly when you are building code around it. So um, we will look a little bit uh, into it and I'll show you a, a small demo because it will be very helpful if you decided to use um, NGFW with FTM functionality in your um, challenge. So what can you do with uh, with this API? Pretty much like you can manipulate all the policy objects, uh, whether it's networks, ports, security zones, applications, URLs, which is very important in your use case. Um, you can actually manage most of your policies, access, NAT, security intelligence, identity, SSL policies. Um, and, and you can do some additional inspection, uh, intrusion, and, and malware. So all these functionalities are available through API. You can do full inter interface configurations. Um, some, some of the routing is being supported. Um, uh, I think mostly, I think it's the static routing which is supported. So, so you can use that for, um, for, for, for those purposes as well. 
Uh, you can do some of the platform settings manipulations as well but i don't think for your challenge you are required all of these things uh, but these functionalities are out there if you decided to use um, uh, devnet sandbox just to get started just to play with the technology i think this is the best uh, route to go uh, in this sandbox, what we have is that you can go to developers.cisco.com and I can quickly uh, demo you guys what I mean. So uh, if we go to sandbox, this is developer.cisco.com, discover, and you go to the sandbox, you go to security uh, sandbox. There are multiple sandboxes which are available here. So uh, one of the good thing about um, uh, reserving sandbox is that you don't have to download anything. You don't have to get anything going. You can just quickly play with NGFW and see whether it suits your challenge or not. And that's the, the, that's the best part. You can use any of these social logins to log in. Um, if you have Cisco ID, that is very, very good. You can use your Cisco ID and you can go ahead and use this. So, so once you authenticate yourself, uh, you will be dropped into this page and over here you see um, is where you will go and reserve your um, um, sandbox. This is a standalone sandbox for for just FTD. So what, what you get from this sandbox is once you press this reserve button, it will reserve that box for you. So you get a developer box and you get uh, a standalone uh, NGFW to play with. And you will get, once you press this reserve button, this um, sandbox will be reserved for you and you will be communicated via email how you're gonna access this. And most likely you're gonna be accessing this through um, uh, uh, AnyConnect. So you have to download the Cisco AnyConnect VPN client. The credentials will be provided to you. So we, in this sandbox, we also give you a developer workstation. So just in case if you don't, don't have your Python um, infrastructure set up, this box has don't worry about it so this is something really quickly you can get started on which is pretty awesome uh, if you want to play with cisco and gfw uh, if you want to set up your own lab i would recommend that you um, you get uh, vmware infrastructure going and then you can go to um, uh, software download .cisco software.cisco.com slash download and here you can find the virtual image of ngfw uh, depending on what infrastructure you want to run on, we have uh, different images over there. So you could see VMware ESI images there. There is a, a KVM image. Uh, so you can look at what image fits you. Um, I would recommend that you download that uh, image and then you can actually use um, a 30 day eval license to, uh, to use the NGFW. So let's quickly look at how um, the, the UI looks like for the NGFW. So you type in the URL, uh, it will prompt you for your admin and password, whatever you have configured. This is how it looks like. So what, what we are focusing on is the policies um, um, and mostly on the access control policy side. If you look at it, I have certain rules which I've created here. Um, um, so like you can you have two options. So let's say if you want to create a new URL You want to enter a name for the rule. I will call it like uh, block um, uh, social um, And I'm gonna call it like um, I'm gonna block that um, And in this I'm gonna go in the URL. I will look if there is a category which already exists um, I can find those categories. Let's say, for example, over here, I'm going to look for uh, social. Um, and so here it's the social network category I found. So all the social network uh, URLs uh, which are there um, will be blocked. And so I, I, I create this rule. So I have this block social network. So either you can pick from the categories or if you have it, uh, uh, um, a URLs which you, you, you think you should, custom URLs you should block, you can do that as well. So you will add a new rule and you will say, hey, I, I would like to block, um, for example, block um, MSN um, and then you will create that, the action would be that you wanna block it, you wanna block the user, oh sorry, the URL 
and that URL um, you're going to create a new URL um, and you will say uh, name is block MSN traffic my description is uh, block everything to MSN and the URL would be um, HTTP msn.com or whatever the URL is and when you when, once you um, select that and you say okay now the rule has been created here where you are blocking all the MSN stuff so this is uh, one way to look at it the other way to look at it is um, a, the other part which is interesting is um, uh, API Explorer So this would be the URL to access the API Explorer. Um, and as you can see, um, when I scroll down, I can get all, all possible endpoints I can look at, uh, which are available uh, to use with this API. So uh, moving on, um, I would like to show you guys uh, one important asset, um, uh, which is uh, which is available for you is learninglabs.cisco.com. It is part of Cisco DevNet. Uh, there we have some labs which are focused on on FTM and how you can code against FTM. So I would highly recommend just going and and trying these labs out before you get uh, started on your challenges because these labs have step by step directions uh, to to get started. Another thing which I would like to share with you guys, additional resources that I have with my um, colleague here, Jared, we have created awesome content, video content um, on, uh, on, the, on the REST APIs, how you can code with REST APIs on FTD. So I would highly recommend that you go and watch these, um, uh, these videos and they will help you significantly um, in, in, in your challenge. So in mind the time, um, I hope this, uh, this session was very helpful. Um, I hope it has uh, given some uh, direction in terms of uh, the challenge, the security challenge. And um, um, I think, uh, thank you so much for, for listening and taking up this challenge. Uh, you, you are trying to solve a, a, a very uh, real world problem and I wish you uh, good luck on that. So. Uh, feel free to visit developer.cisco.com anytime. There's, it's full of resources. You want to learn coding, there are resources for that. You want to learn about Cisco network or networking in general. You want to learn about collaboration. You want to learn about security. Um, it's full of resources. So I hope to see you soon in one of our events uh, or um, always uh, available on Twitter, uh, Vira at Cisco. Uh, so if you need any help and I can help you, uh, please feel free to drop me a note. So thank you so much uh, for your uh, time and attention. Good luck.